Hello again, and welcome back to Don't Worry About the Government. My name is Chris Novembrino. This is part two of my 35th birthday spectacular. Joining me on the call today, regrettably, is Cody. Hi, Cody. Hello. Happy birthday. Oh, uh, thanks. It's nice, nice of you to say that. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Cody's here. Robert's here. Hi. Welcome back to the show, Robert. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, glad to have you on again. Lindsay, the truth, Duke. The truth is uh, wherever you're at right now, Lindsay, how's it going? Yes, the truth resides within me, and it can reside within all of us today when we have this wonderful, beautiful roundtable discussion about a, a, a topic I'm really passionate about. What's up, Chris? <laughs> not much, Lindsay, not much. And rounding out the round table is Dan Carpenter. How's it going, Dan? Doing well, Chris. Doing well. It's Good. Also very hot here in very sunny California. Miserably hot. Uh, we have arrived at the time of the summer where what I really would like to do between the hours of about three to six is just sleep. Uh, really embrace that European siesta culture in, like in an earnest way. I can't. I can't do over 100 anymore. I, I like, I look back at my youth in Arizona and I go like, why, how, why and how we'll, um, we'll, we'll be there tomorrow. It's going to be uh it's going to be a little bit rough. I'm going to get all of my work done outside before like noon and then just hide for the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, but we're not here to discuss the weather, although it's a fascinating topic, a lot of ins, a lot of outs with the weather. But uh, what we're here to talk about today is a story that I guess is still ongoing because we don't have the report as of yet, but it is the story surrounding uh, UAPs. So I'm going to do a quick recap of what the story is, roughly speaking, then we can get into more of the granular details and for, before that, go around the horn and just kind of see where everyone's coming in. But to recap for the uninitiated, there is right now a bipartisan congressional report that will be coming out. Uh, it was actually attached to the COVID relief bill uh, that was passed last year. Uh, Rubio, Marco Rubio is the one who attached it to this. Um, they studied a number of these unidentified aerial phenomenon. They have compiled those into a report. This is part of an ongoing story that goes goes roughly back to 2004 involving a aircraft carrier known as the USS Nimitz um, continued involving the USS Theodore Roosevelt and there are according to the Washington Post here hundreds of these reported incidences many of which are explained by terrestrial means um, weather balloons uh, drones these sorts of things but a number of which are not um, and it's it's a fairly I can get into the kind of deeper, longer history going from the 90s, but that's kind of the setup. Um, first and foremost, I think probably the best starting point, though, is to go around the horn and sort of see where everyone comes in on this uh, in preparation for this show. We watched three documentaries. Uh, one's called Mirage Man. The other one's called Unacknowledged. The other one's called Unidentified. Um, Unidentified is this television i always get them backwards um unidentified it's a television series right am i correct mm -hmm. on that okay mm -hmm. yeah unidentified it's a television series with two seasons uh that centers around lou alessandro tom DeLong, and chris mellon um unacknowledged uh is kind of a broader documentary that covers a more wide range of topics and mirage Men covers uh really the ufo phenomenon prior to the year 2000 more than after the year 2000. um but let's uh let's start with Robert. Robert, you watched all of this stuff. I'm interested to see where you came in on all of this because I, I feel like you and I have not really chatted on this topic at all. No, I, you know, I think we'll learn some stuff, but I don't think, like you said, I don't think we're gonna learn that little green men have been watching us because if we if that was the case, Trump couldn't have kept that quiet. He would have been like Okay. Um, Lindsay, where are you coming in on this? Well, we got the the teeny tiny summary, but I want to see the full thing of just and they're basically saying it's not aliens, which I find completely boring and unimaginative. <coughs> Whoa, there's my dog. Um, I find that completely boring and unimaginative. And I think it's tulpas. What are tulpas? 
good question, Chris. We'll, <gasps> we'll discuss it more later. Uh, okay. Um, Cody, where are you coming on this? A uh, skeptic. Pretty, like, I never th- thought about it hard enough before you made me think about it really hard and want to come down one way or the other. And I've come down on the skeptic side. Like, I don't like that, but yeah. Okay. And Dan. Uh, great, great claims require great proof. Um, I, I'm generally, generally skeptic. Um, I, I, I want to believe I am completely open to, uh, to uh, evidence. The, the uh, Elizondo stuff was uh was very compelling uh but i i'm i'm still on on the skeptical side my testimony can be a little buggy yeah um and then i guess uh, i'll round it off with my take on this um so I got to be honest, it's been a subject that's always been interesting to me, but like nothing that I've ever spent any serious amount of time looking into. Uh, I found the documentaries on a website where I've just been watching other movies. uh, And I was like, ah, it seems like now it's time to do this. Found a number of these documentaries, started watching through it. And then I started kind of doing the research into this. Um, I think initially I started more favorable towards the skeptical position because I didn't really know all that much on the topic. But um, as time went on, I felt like the burden of proof for the skeptical conspiracy really starts getting out of hand. Um, Like, essentially, to guess, kind of introduce some of the history here, this dates back, the ATIP program, um, Dan mentioned Lou Elizondro, who uh, may or may not have been the head of ATIP. It's kind (laughs) of interesting. The... People who are skeptical about Elizondro, I think, are on probably stronger ground than on the broader case because it sort of predates Elizondro. Um, it goes back to Harry Reid and Daniel Inouye, um, a USS or U.S. senator from Hawaii who was a World War II pilot. He also personally claims to have had a, an unidentified aerial phenomenon encounter while he himself was in World War II. They sort of spearheaded this program along with um of all people ted stevens the internet is uh made of tubes ted stevens um but reed uses his stroke as the senate majority leader to create this program called atip um during this time a number of military personnel come forward and bolster this claim this leads to a robust debate inside of the department of defense that has continued It now has bipartisan support among all of these senators. And as I started to better understand how deeply and broadly this is believed among a number of people in Washington, it either is the greatest hoax played on all elected officials of all time. Um, It is the elected officials playing a grand hoax on all of us. or there is in fact like a, a aerial phenomenon that is going on that they don't think can be neatly described as um, Russian, Chinese, weather balloons, camera trickery or other things. I don't think if it was any of those kind of terrestrial mundane explanations, this would have had such staying power among the military and elected officials. And I think it's important to divorce that from normal everyday civilians. Um, one of the things I didn't like about unacknowledged or uni- unidentified, unidentified um, was that they spent a decent amount of time talking to civilians and stuff later on. Um, civilians have seen Bigfoot. Civilians have seen UFOs. There has not been a push by the Senate Majority Leader courting bipartisan consensus, getting numbers of people from the military to do an extended study of Bigfoot. Um, That's in and of itself to me what makes this story interesting. And while I think the skeptics maybe have something interesting to say here or there about videos, I don't think they do a really good job accounting for this part of the problem. And after I think about that, I I kind of come down on 
I do believe that there is a thing such that serious people in the military with access to much better information than I have, um, and even beyond Lou Elizondo, um, they really do take this seriously. And they can't just explain it away as either the Russian or Chinese, um, which would have been their otherwise go-to sort of explanation outside of weather balloons. Yeah, well, I think we are walking into, um, at least for me, it's this quote from, uh, I'm actually making sure I get it word for word right, because it's kind of been one of those things that has rung in my head um, most of my life as I have delved into the weird uh, of UF the weird UFO-ness. You know, me and my dad have always bonded over uh, UFOs and all the um, coast to coast radio sort of stuff since I was like a little kid. So this is like my wheelhouse. But the quote that always stuck with me is uh, Arthur Clarke, two both are equally terrifying and i think that's what i keep seeing with these um these whatever they are it, it comes down to either they are aliens or they are not and they are something another country probably has created and it is terrifying <laughs> because if everyone within our own military at least within you know not some sort of top secret level sort of person if all of these people are looking at these things and saying we have nothing that can do this that means something can do this and it's uh, we gotta cross our fingers and hope it's us and we're being lied to because otherwise there's a problem that's been going back is going as far back as 2004 and maybe even before that because these things have you know sort of always been in the consciousness uh since you know decades of these specific um you know tic tac shaped things that move very quickly in odd directions i don't know it's it's kind of a scary situation to be in when you when you put away the silliness of hey we're talking about aliens like for real for real yeah i i mean i didn't spend a whole lot of time going down the full wormhole of this, but I was really struck by the fairly large number of Air Force pilot accounts around this. That it was like way bigger than I was kind of anticipating. Um, this is actually kind of a more fair, more common thing than you might think to see. Yeah, and specifically the Navy has a lot of these encounters. Um, you know, in San Diego, where they, I think they said in one of the documentaries, it's like. The largest amount of all the military ships and things like that are stored there maybe i'm wrong san diego's like the one of the american hubs of the yeah the military industrial complex the, yeah there's uh um there's bases above la there's bases in between la and san diego there's uh um coronado island which is just off the coast of san diego is a uh is where the seals train like there is the whole the entire uh area is very militarized or is where where we have a lot of our military infrastructure and yeah that's where these things are happening at things right where and, and that's like the question arms right? are... <laughs> yeah it's so it's go ahead no i just i before we got too far from it i want to like i like that quote you mentioned because that's sort of where i fall down on just on the other side of I think you and Chris which is I think to maybe a reasonable certainty we know that there's also the possibility that we know to a reasonable certainty that these are not the players that you would suspect these to be and that's the thing that I feel like is scary to people in the know and is a little scary to other people you know, when they find out about this is like, yeah, this stuff is coming from a country. It's, it's not the ones that it should be. And, it, and that's the, that's the frustrating part. It certainly raises the question of what does our military and intelligence community know that they don't share with any president? Yeah. Yeah. That's the other part of it is at what point does an elected official just not get to know any of this 
and and in the case of Trump, because there is that one clip in the documentary, I, I mean, here's the problem with trying to read too much into that clip. We also know extemporaneously that the military sort of decided we're not briefing this guy in on any number of different things. So I don't I like I was thinking about that when I was rewatching this. It's like, yeah, but they chose to keep a lot of shit secret from Trump one way or the other. It's, I, I'd wonder I'd wonder if they had like uh, HW walk into W Bush and just be like, don't worry, buddy. Like, just trust me. Like, I got like you don't need to know. I, I knew you don't need to know. It's all right. And we know and we know from like just years of osmosis of like pop culture and just history and military and politicians talking about our military has war games for like any fucking scenario you could think of like you name it they probably have a scenario from it they probably have a real just sitting on a shelf somewhere if zombies somehow whenever there it is and i'm sure they have something for this i doubt the president gets read in on those unless you know break glass in case of emergency oh it's actually time for this zombie plan to come into action who knew all right so mr president this is the thing we came up with decades ago you know whatever that type of thing is but i well, don't about... go ahead sorry i don't <laughs> i don't i don't blink so much when i see like bill clinton and one of these things or harry reed um or marco rubio talking about these things because honestly i at a certain point, I could understand them not getting read on military intelligence and military procedure for things unless it was absolutely necessary. I think you kind of keep some of this stuff at the highest levels compartmentalized until it needs to be brought out. And I mean, when I really think about like what I consider to be the tenable skeptical positions ultimately requires something like that, that there there is this is essentially a deep state conspiracy, what you're getting into um, and not an unserious like Trumpian deep state conspiracy. Yeah. But the, but the implication is the military is basically keeping everyone in Congress and in the legislative branch really in the dark on this. Um, and also, like, I, I mean there's just a, there's a lot of moving pieces in all of that and um and, and going back to great claims require great proof i like that's plausible as a you know a, a hypothesis i would just need to see a lot more meat on that yeah to, yeah actually buy to know to buy that yeah that's uh, yeah. sort of that, yeah that's sort of where i ended up falling down on is but it's also a position that i am not completely rooted in the ground on you know like i'm still eh, like you could shift me either way with just a little bit more. I just watching this stuff came away with like, I kind of feel like this is a human problem, but well, yeah, maybe the official in the world probably would like to be able to say, gee, I had no idea this was going on. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, the the I, I don't think it requires as great of a like um, as grand of a conspiracy if like we we don't actually have any data that says that these objects are actually moving as fast as these eyewitness accounts suggest they are. You, like you that, don't have any data. You I don't have any no, data. You, you don't have the government. The you don't know, no, you don't know that. That that's not that you can't. That's I not know. something you can make certifiably. You don't know that. You don't have any data. Nobody has any data. That, right now. That's the also not a claim you can positively make. All right, you don't they, have any data. I don't have any data. Cody doesn't have any data. Nobody on this call has data. But that's not the same as saying that the military and the people on the Nimitz and, and that there is no data in the world. That's a very I big have data. claim. All right. No, you don't. You do not. Just, you're lying. You're it's lying. just mine. I keep uh, it in a little tiny pocket. But that's the. I I would believe these objects were moving that fast if, if any of that data was there. If that like if the Nimitz, the it's very convenient that the Nimitz data walked out the door. Like it's that's that's the big, like there are. There are things that explain the phenomenon that you see on the camera that are that occur because they're on the camera when we don't have 
the rest of the data, you can't, you can only make so much of an info or uh, you can only draw so much of a conclusion from that. That's a good point. Uh, the camera analysis is really incomplete if you don't have a full set of data. So sometimes you can't really trust analysis of photo stuff. To that I point, would push back on that a little bit though, because it's not just it's not just a speed thing. It's a maneuvering thing. We've seen the, in the unidentified show. The most compelling thing to me was was watching the pilots who have had lifetime experience with this watch these things and kind of you know can't act to save their lives they are sitting there reacting to it saying i don't know how that's possible it could be going i don't know how many miles per hour but they're saying whatever that is we don't have the ability to do that with the planes and drones that we have today so yeah there but is that, certainly that's, something going on there that's that's an that's an anecdote captured by their eyeballs they may be professional observers they may be highly trained in this but it's not like the I mean, but like that's the problem with a lot of independent analysts then too, right? Like it's an anecdote from their eyeballs. Um, I, I mean, and, and I guess it gets into a question of do you place military and particularly piloting expertise at a premium when it comes to understanding this situation? And I, I think I do. That the that's why I said the the eyewitness the eyewitness testimony the uh, is it's very compelling. But like it's, I, I also think the analysis of, of a pilot is very compelling. That's what Lindsay's sitting, saying. And I know you you separated out the civilians from from this discussion, but there's people sitting in jail over eyewitness test like compelling eyewitness. I testimony. will agree with that. Eyewitness testimony is the one of the least reliable pieces of evidence that we have out there. Um, uh, and, and but here's the problem with that, Dan. Um, that that's still getting admitted into court for some reason. Um, because people find eyewitness testimony to actually be somewhat compelling and somewhat useful in many situations. So if it was really that bad, it wouldn't be part of the system anymore. And the same thing is you can use bad no, it video. would be. There, no, 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 There are people yeah. sitting in jail because of bad video analysis. So if I'm going to get to do a limit case, I can play that limit case. It's more uh, bad unidentified. Uh, it's more based on faulty human memory than anything than no that's completely impossible to compare because a video can be at least everyone can have an opinion on a, a but, video but tape. you all look at it say that not you, everybody can have an opinion on someone's memory because nobody can take it out of their head and, and show so it to my you. cousin it's to go back to the nimitz then it's great that we have in addition to eyewitness testimony multi levels of documentation video radar evidence and other layers to this um it is but like but to, to, to just wave off eyewitness testimony entirely is not what I'm the not... court system does and i don't think it's actually a valid analysis technique but if you were going to do that then i think you could also basically wave off amateur video analysis right like like you would want expert analysts at this at minimum if we're going by well, court standards what's interesting like is i that... would i could never bring in a a former Wendy's manager to come in and do independent video analysis Actually, in the courtroom, right? You like that, that at this point because we are having <laughs> what we are, listen, Chris. If we're talking about evidence and just the concept of evidence, I mean, true crime is like my my lifeblood at this point. Evidence is kind of bullshit in general, so we can't. Some of these experts so, so the literally are analogy it's, in the first place. Some of these really people, it does not stand at all because okay. some of these people okay. literally I, I go didn't to, start it. I was just working through the analogy. They go to a weekend. How? What does a bullet look like after it's been fired? Workshop, and now they are testifying in in some sort of like case that puts somebody in jail for thirty five years, and we find out a you know twenty years into that sentence that guns you and all that <laughs> guns don't have a lot of magic fingerprints like we that we want to believe it's evidence is kind of garbage is is what my opinion would be and eyewitness testimony is the, the king of that garbage okay so <laughs> you, i guess you could wave it all off that is also just i can't find it but you just said the court analogy is also like a bad analogy so i don't know which one you want but uh, i mean either we're in a world where i can bring in w wendy's managers to do analysis on military footage 
um, and we have eyewitness testimony or I'm not. I, I don't know. Like, I, I guess we kind of are in that world. Though. OK, we, we have that entire world. Uh, and this, and this is the problem through Facebook and Twitter and, and then, right. It's, Amateur it's the the whole, bunkers are the Wendy managers coming. It's in. the nature of truth at this point, <laughs> because what we are saying is either these people are credible. This stuff is believable or no, sorry. And there is absolutely a conspiracy where there's got to be two or three people tops that know the truth and they're the people actually running the world. Like, that's a complicated, heavy thing. And like the, the conspiracy to keep it all secret is just as com complicated as the secret, the conspiracy to fake it all secret. I think yeah. it's a mess. That's, the, that's what I got out of the whole series. You can I mean, undermine any evidence, but if you undermine everything, then where are you? I think we're all having to figure out you know, with internet and smartphones and information out there, how to triage information and evidence. And we're, we're doing that as a society in real time. What I think what was crazy um, is we really have these two major pieces of evidence, the, the Nimitz and the videos happening off the coast of uh, DC in the Virginia, Maryland area. And those are two completely different types of videos and they, they there was at least 10 years difference or something between them and i don't know they were terrifying when i watched it because i've seen those videos over the years but i've never really sat down and like focused on them and like had this these documentaries kind of talk to me with the these eyewitnesses and the people who were there and it really becomes just a daunting thing of this is very bad. This is very, very bad. And if this little report that the government put out like last week with their teeny tiny summary of, hey, it's not aliens. Honestly, it would have been not better what the if they summary had said. Says. That's actually not what the summary it's says. Not, it, it says it's, it's not, not us. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. Like the, the other. Yeah, because the but, other the other thing about like that. That's, all, that's not two, good. <laughs> yeah, the other thing about those like two pieces is say this report comes out which maybe it'll say i'm of like two minds of it like it's not us it's probably somebody else or it's nobody down here i the way we react to that i think will be very laissez-faire given how we just saw the world treat a global pandemic but the other thing that scares me is or, or the global data like hoover yeah 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 but it's if it was real no one care still yes yeah, so There's for some... me the thing is okay it's aliens they don't give a fuck about us <laughs> and that's well, there's terrifying where i think there is an ans answer to that because look let's pretend for a second it is aliens there's a consistency in what they're interested in and it's our let's okay they're interested in what we're doing with the nuclear bomb it kind of feels like if it's aliens we're being babysat by a, a smarter more intelligent power to keep an eye on us boy i don't want to wait till like bombs i don't want to wait till the baby <laughs> gets right at the edge of pushing the glass off the table for like us to realize there was an adult in the room that catches it i don't want that to be how we find out is like who, who they're in the air they and then they're not it. yeah well that true <laughs> <laughs> maybe they maybe they're just yeah. waiting to, to have the whole planet for themselves i, yeah. I mean like I, I you know i i don't get too hung up on this but you know you could certainly see a passive observer species that like uh much like jane goodall thinking that you know she's going and observing the apes essentially that's what the, what this uh species is trying to do um, I don't know. I, I, I gotta be honest of all the things. That's the thing I spent the least amount of time on. Um, okay, go ahead, Dan with, with, uh, since, since, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we've had so many, so many bombs flying around the air and there's been multiple, multiple instances of, uh, yeah, fair. Planes, I know exactly where you're going. Carrying, yep. Planes carrying atomic weapons, like Just, crashing, oh, fall, like yeah. dropping them by accident. Like we they left got, some it got nukes. Loose and it yeah, fell. we left. Uh, we dropped a nuke like 
so that's the coast like we left a bunch of nukes on a tarmac just sitting there for a while like yeah i think there's one sitting in a swamp in georgia that we've never been able to find yep (laughs) Uh, i could see us very well being babysat like that that would be an amazing sitcom (laughs) just the guy who finds (laughs) <laughs> some alligator well, that, some days the, no nah, bro the nuclear swamp is going to be one of the most horrifying places in all of the future south uh, Gator get in yeah no like that's a that's a it's a scary thing we um, actually made a, godzilla <laughs> a future discussion we we do uh we, we discuss the nuclear swamp uh another panel show um all right Can I so, talk about how much i fucking hated one of these movies that we watched do it which one <laughs> i just want to dunk on it real quick unacknowledged oh. i i love juan carlo esposito it's narrated by juan carlo esposito and so i was like and at the start and then it just got very sensely sensationalist really quickly and i was like fuck you like i just like threw my middle fingers up at the tv and i was like i hate this one already i hate it because it felt like it was insulting my intelligence and laughing at the mere notion that I was even watching this thing. Like at least unidentified was like, if you're watching this, you know what this is by this point. It's 20, 2020 when that thing came out, 2021. 2019 and 2020. 2019, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you know what the score is on the subject matter you're watching. We're not going to treat you like you're an idiot and we're not going to laugh at you. And I just felt, so, oh, it made my skin crawl. And I haven't had that reaction to like just the very start of a documentary in a while. I mean, I, I got not going to lie. Like I didn't love Mirage Men either. I thought, yep. Mirage mm-hmm. Men was, yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, I literally, I included them to have like a more complete perspective, um, like to literally just kind of like open up. All right, the, Chris, I melded them together in my mind. I hate them both. So yeah, much. no, they both, no, they both, they both stunk. Um, and I gotta say, on on unidentified, um, the second season felt very much in search of substance, and so like they got like into like abductions and other shit that I don't really care about, other than, I guess this Case Schiller incident. I don't know what explains it, but like that thing, I mean, is, is fascinating. Um. But other than that, well, that, uh, that was the first thing the the somebody accident like the Air Force accidentally like dropping a nuke in their backyard and then like having to cover it up was the was what my mind immediately jumped to. But I also didn't like rabbit hole that case that much. Yeah, like, not- it's it's interesting. It's just interesting that like went to court and yeah, like I, it could be nuclear accident, but like it was definitely like they definitely got flash exposed to something with radiation um yeah that's like it cracked mm-hmm. cracked the yeah. cracked some kind of shell open and exposed them to like mm-hmm. uranium or yeah, something here like. I'll, I'll read it real quick this is the cash landrum incident not the cash shiller incident the witnesses claim that after the ufo and the helicopters left cash took all the landrums home and then retired for the evening that night they reportedly all experienced similar symptoms though cash to a greater degree the claim is that they suffered from nausea vomiting diarrhea general weakness a burning sensation in their eyes and a feeling as though they were suffering from sunburn so like yeah it totally sounds like radiation Radiation. yeah i know um but it's it's interesting i mean like look uh the one thing that i thought mirage men did a decent job detailing is that there there has been a past with the government doing tests in U.S. like airspace, land space, and it having an impact on the civilian population and them covering it up. Well, that's I I just the the Richard Dottie throughout that throughout that entire documentary, uh, he's like talking about his former career doing doing disinformation and ops, and it's pretty. I feel like th- though he may be he may be have have left. It's similar to like Steve, uh, Doctor Steve Pachenik going on Infowars. He like he t- he tells tells Alex about all of the all of the uh, disinformation campaigns that he's done, and then proceeds to do a disinformation campaign on Alex Jones. It's it's really it's fun to watch. But it was like Dottie by the end of it, like he's like yeah, like it. They're totally like it's it's just very like. Uh, he, I I think he might still be working. Oh, I, I think that's fair to say. I, I think it's fair to say. Um, and I, I mean, like, look, I, I think strategically, 
if UFOs don't exist, if UAPs don't exist, it benefits governments to create the illusion that they do exist, um, which is certainly it's it's an interesting argument um, uh, or like an interesting argument sort of like in favor of skepticism towards some of this. I mean, just like the, the issue here goes back to the technology, as Lindsay was sort of talking about here. And like either you believe, I guess, one of three things um, that the Nimitz and then also like all of the encounters um, involving the Theodore Roosevelt um, and the pilots there that if you don't believe the eyewitnesses or you think the eyewitness testimony is unreliable, um, even in a sustaining sort of volume like that, essentially what you're believing there is that like there is something that is leading to a mass illusory event um, or some technology or some sort of weapon that can create like a mass illusion sort of thing. Um, or you believe that like according to this government report that's said to come out, the government says it's not us. You believe that they're lying. Um, that it is in fact us, that we have made some sort of really, really meaningful and substantial technological leap when it comes to propulsion, and we've been testing it on our own people. Um, or you believe that like we have mastered multi-field sort of illusory technology, um, essentially that we have found a way to bamboozle our pilots um, visually like in their with their own vision, but also using radar and other things to have essentially a spoofing event that happens in multiple fields at multiple times. Um, that is something that I was thinking about that genuinely it requires it a seems, lot for me to believe it requires that. a lot and requires but, a lot of technology to even get that off the ground. Oh, absolutely. But so does creating whatever these things are. We're talking about circa year 2004, <laughs> though, Lindsay. Like we're not. I know. Yeah, I, I just I don't we're believe that we had multi 2004 for illusory technology, and I don't believe the Russians or Chinese did. But whatever these things are, seems to have, have extremely advanced technology in general. So why can't it be something like that? Why does it have to be a physical nuts and bolts craft? Why can't oh, it oh, be that, something that, that that the entity or whatever is essentially doing a mass illusion thing? That like this is illusion yeah, technology. Yeah, we. I mean, we have unidentified we have, illusion technology, otherworldly. Yeah, I okay. mean, this is a perfect time to talk about tulpas, but <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Hit, I guess hit me with tulpas. Tulpa can, can I have one minute for tulpas? Uh, okay, you can so have tulpa... two. Cool, 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 cool. Sounds so like a tulpa a food. is a yeah, a tapa, a tapa tulpa. Um. A tulpa is essentially us creating something with our collective thoughts. Um, so, like the, I'm in. the uh, like Slender Man, we have we all think about the Slender Man. We create this myth around him, and suddenly, all the collective psychic energy creates something that has its own like personality and 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 life and everything like that like um another a, a really good example of tulpas are uh the men in black a lot of people think they're tulpas just like these i that things start happening in the 50s there was um you know conspiracy and red scare and all this stuff like our anxieties creep up to the point where we create something and project it out so that we um have this thing that is from our collective unconsciousness. And I'm just saying that's way cooler than it being drones. Or like in ancient times, gods disappear if you stop worship, worshiping them. Exactly. That's a Star Trek episode. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that, there's a, an episode where Kirk and Spock go to a planet and get held hostage by a God that demands that he worship them uh, specifically so that he doesn't fade out of existence. Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying, I, I, I mean, are way cooler. Okay, but like again, I, I, I it just ta I, that takes a lot to buy into. Um, and, and like, I mean, <laughs> it's it's interesting. It's interesting, but like, I, I don't. In no, in I do Lindsay's, like the psychic phenomenon. Uh, in Lindsay's uh, idea oh, of it, though, go ahead. In Lindsay's favor, like, there's like a, I don't know, probably fifteen thousand year tradition of that, like. <laughs> okay, a fifteen thousand year tradition I mean, of these sorts of things appearing on radar, 
I, I mean, like, like, let's just run down like the Nimitz incident here. I actually took some notes on here of all I love the people. How mad Chris is. We uh, no, create because, no, the Topa like, on radar really, with our really, mind, really, Chris. Right. It's nutty to say we create the Topa on radar. <laughs> l l that's that's where this falls apart. So we have. Have Kevin, you ever Topled, Chris? Have you ever Topled? We have Kevin Day, radar <laughs> specialist on the USS Princeton, who I guess is either an idiot or has absolutely nothing to say about radar testimony. He says that a hundred objects on the radar are, are there and he calls for an intercept which other people on the Nimitz do uh, either because of a mass delusion event or Day is just like an amateur and shouldn't have been on specialists. Gary Voorhees four days prior said they had reset the systems because they thought there was a system malfunction that they were seeing things on the radar. They reset and the problem persisted but was corroborated by other ships. Um, they say that they observed objects that went from 30,000 feet to sea level and they had sonar get sight simultaneous hits when the object goes to sea level like if, if i really but was gonna if i was gonna that believe data... that that was a talpa of gary Voorhees, it requires a sophisticated level of talpaing dan more talpaing than anyone has ever talpa before and you don't have documentary evidence of someone talpaing that hard so i'm a little bit dream is a wish your heart makes um Voorhees <laughs> no, but says he doesn't they don't there this is them recounting this is them giving an so he's anecdote a liar. of the he's radar a liar. Data. right he's i don't a liar. know no no i i mean day's a liar Voorhees is a liar cahill also offers testimony and personal observation liar or idiot um two pilots observe it through interception david fraper and another anonymous female pilot so again maybe you don't believe them maybe you don't believe any of these people but in order to make the talpa theory get off the ground you have to account for all these different checkpoints and i don't think that that sort of argument works and i think this is a problem for a number of different skeptical arguments when you actually have to go through all the different wickets the croquet ball does not make it to the post. He's so mad about my creative idea. I'm just offering something that's beautiful and fun. <laughs> and you just want to do nuts and bolts UFOs. And I just find them very boring. I don't know. The whole thing about the whole, seriously though, the idea of a nuts and bolts UFO is a whole genre of UFO all it, or ufology, if you want to be really obnoxious about it. And there's something kind of clunky and strange about the idea of how these things actually move through space to get here. Is it literally a ship? Is it literally like a like you could go over and knock on it and it, you know, it's there kind of thing? Or is there possibly a technology that is so advanced with these these aliens that it's a projection, a hologram, something else like that that screws up with our technology? I don't have the answer. I'm just saying there could be more fun ones out there. I, I tend to think like this is, I mean, so often we tend to think what alien technology would be like is like humans like 150 years in the future, maybe 200 years in the future. Like we're doing like little UFOs or whatever and like metal objects. But like, I mean, if this really is an issue of otherworldly propulsion and we've seen this propulsion inside of like inside of the planet, you can only imagine what sort of propulsion would be possible outside of the planet. And like, I mean, if you ever get interested in like abstract physics, they're always looking all the time at different ways that we can move through space time. Um, and that uh, largely remains a huge mystery to us. So to your point, Lindsay, are, could, they could be projections um, as well. It, it could be yeah. just like that, that Tupac um, hologram, but <laughs> little tiny drones that are just trying to like an actual astral projection. Yeah, that's what a, that's what a tulpa is. Is basically all of our collect collective unconsciousness is our anxieties and fears and dreams all bubbled up into one thing. But anyway, there is a there is something. We would have made okay, in two thousand four. We would have made a tulpa of Bin Laden. Like there would have been like a. What I'm saying of, is that is was that, the war on terror. <laughs> I, what I'm saying is that that's that would be a perfect time for a tulpa to exist is during the war on terror at the in the Iraq war our anxieties rise to such a level that we create because here's the thing with UFOs that I can't quite explain even if I want to believe and I do believe in some of them like crafts as we describe them 
to each other, like as pop culture grows, when people start seeing little, you know, flying saucers in pop culture, they start seeing them in the air as well. But throughout time, when we have these moments of possible UFO sightings through the 1800s in the Bible, all, you know, the entire ancient aliens collection of things, they don't look like flying saucers. They look like what, what, what people see at the time and understand like literal ships or you know balls of light angels um, they, dragons angels dra they they have to use the words they have and i do find that fascinating that that ufo's change shape over time depending on what we understand current technology to be so i'm just saying it could be a little wiggity so maybe Iraq had WMDs. We just manifested them into the wrong timeline. Yeah, the, the Nimitz stuff is the most fascinating to me. Um, I think because of the credibility of the of time over, like in on like the Theodore Roosevelt's pretty interesting too. Like that goes on for nine months. Like that is the one that makes I, me think. How it's, can it's, that go on for nine months and be completely bunk? I think that's the spectrum. I think the Nimitz makes me believe in aliens. And then the the other makes me think that it's literally drones being tested because it reminded me so much of things I've seen in in like um I'm, I'm these are horrible examples but you know at the I think the Sochi Olympics we saw the drones moving in shapes at the Super Bowl with Lady Gaga the way those moved in and created patterns there were like a hundred drones out there that could very quickly redo shapes that's what they did at joe biden's inauguration with drones they could uh, you know create all sorts of flags and stars and things in the sky so is this is that what was being tested literally you know 10 15 years ago and the technology is now commercial uh, but back then it looks completely crazy because the 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 ones with the um off of Maryland and, and Virginia, they were talking about them being a fleet and how one of them was leading the rest of them. That sounds like drones to me. I don't know much, but that's weird that there's like a leader and here's the little followers. And we know that they know that drones can do that now, that they can, you know, stay in one spot. They can, everything else doesn't make sense. The speed and the, I'm not saying that they are drones. I'm saying that there's aspects that remind me of drones, which makes me go skeptical. It's the Nimitz that makes me go, um, you know, tic-tac shape thing. The thing we don't talk about nearly as much is that the tic-tac shape was over a spot in the water where something was submerging. I mean, they don't talk about the submerged object nearly as much as the I guess because it's and, not and the fact cool. that the, it gets caught <laughs> on the sonar piece of it too, like like the the fact that it went from radar to sonar uh, is is interesting to me as well. Yeah, they're two separate that's, entities. That, that's a very interesting NSA vault. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just I don't know. There uh, there were two moments during the unidentified show that go for the skeptics. I think because it it was like very brief moments of um, people, the believers not wanting to show their cards, but they kind of do a little bit. And it's where uh, Alessandro is talking to the Skunk Works guy and they're discussing like, do you know of anything in this that we're working on like that? And the Skunk Works guy's like, no, I can't talk about that. I won't even discuss it. But he does make a point. There's like a moment where Alessandro is like, is like rubbing his chin and thinking and the other guy says you need to partition it off in your head so there is the potential that maybe something we do have these some of these technologies maybe not all of them and then there's a moment with graves who i think is from the um is it the george washington um, yeah yeah he's uh yeah he, 2014, 2015. he's very convincing and then they ask him do you know of anything like this that we have and he's like i'm not prepared to comment on that which is basically yes i thought it was all so, coin i thought it was danny all coin who's reacted that way probably yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 but um yeah i thought that was interesting as well um this is fun <laughs> nobody knows anything everything's confusing I, I think the best thing that 
the skeptics like if i was having to mount a skeptical argument like in a debate on this specifically around this specific story i'd be going after alessandro hard uh it would be it'd be it it's not an honest frame but i'd be alessandro's story does have earnest questions and if i was trying to win like a debate to influence opinion or whatever that's where i'd be going to town on um in, the intercept in has any, a really good piece on that in any forum like in any forum that i've seen him in outside of the the history channel documentary with like history channel producers and editors and like hundred thousand dollar cameras he is not he's definitely not as shiny definitely not as like composed and put together so it's that that is that is definitely a uh but that like i but but that's like not, it's that's not, not my it's problem not with that. Um, like, yeah no i i think like the intercept does a really nice job kind of getting into a bit of a murky timeline as to what alessandro has been doing when over the last 15 years and like he doesn't Sometimes the timeline doesn't seem to line up and at bare minimum you get left when studying Elizondo with a clear sense that he is hiding something fairly substantial here that he knows that would be useful for all of us to know to have a better understanding of what's going on when Lou Elizondo is talking about the things that Lou Elizondo is talking about in regards to his relationship with a tip which is again separate from the Nimitz or the George Washington. It's just connected insofar as Alessandro is the guy who like, I guess had the videos at one point, so, something to that effect. Yeah, it's kind of, that's the thing with UFOs and this entire um, history of sightings I, and things like that is that it ruins people's lives. And if you're not crazy, when you start, you become crazy by the time it's over. And I think you, we could, I, I, I kind of fell asleep during Mirage Men, well, this, so you this guys might know more about it... Dodie. But that Dodie character is like a, a perfect example of what happens when we have this disinformation campaign that goes out there and you you, you have no idea what mess they're making. And what's oh, that reporter, about. that reporter who they like the government gaslights for like destroyed her, uh, just destroys her. Um, no, I, I, and I, and I mean, I think people know about that and that's what makes to me the robust debate on capitol hill and the fact that there is a growing and large faction of serious professional people with serious things to lose brunches to no longer get invited to um and all of the wonderful trappings of dc um you know acela life um there are people very much tacking on this other side of the debate for no other reason that I can clearly glean other than like they believe it. Um, you know, I think that they believe that something's happening that's unconstitutional and they're very angry about it. Um, and it's like it's a, it's like a Snowden kind of drop where they would find out that something is happening that something like even the president doesn't know about. So that it that there is that sort of secretness about some of the stuff that they are not clued in on and i think that is very real at the end of the day uh, if nothing else <laughs> i have a skeptical argument so what if the truth is there's a lot we don't know you know one way or the other it's a big universe but the why this is all coming up now is being done in an effort to siphon on QAnon people into something that's less harmful huh um, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I actually got, went down the wormhole a little bit on like the, it's a distraction argument and that one's been around for a long time, but I, I like people always have to find an argument of the day as to what the, it's a distraction is. And I don't think that this is really connected with the right, um, in a way, like if this was supposed to be the thing to wean people off of QAnon, you would see, I think, a different media push among their independent media sphere around this story. Um, generally speaking, this story has sort of already come and went for them and been replaced with critical race theory. Whereas <laughs> if you were like, like, this is not getting the Epstein treatment, right? There's, like, there's, an, this... onward, there's an onward Christian soldier aspect to the, the QAnon thing that like yeah. UAPs just don't even touch on like that. If they would actually be antithetical to like their deistic worldview. This yes. might sound yeah. counter to what we think of 
uh, probably as a whole on this call of QAnon people. I don't think they're the kind of people that go for something like this. I don't think they believe it's real. Which might no, sound ridiculous given the things they do uh, believe. Uh, yeah, but we're, we're talking think, global child I think you, ring. Yeah, but yeah, no, I think sure, you have sure. too many you have too many decades of which a lot of those people have been alive for you, QAnon, if to my understanding, is not a young demographic thing. It's a it's very much an old people's Here's club. What... So like they they have been around the block and heard all of the conspiracy stuff about here's what i yeah i, yeah. I will say about that is that the people who are into QAnon now were trained by the history channel and all of the, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic like they were trained by ancient alien thought and looking for conspiracies and um the dan brown you know um i have him yeah, world. I have immediate family that have yeah. fallen in and out of the QAnon hole over the last year. They are not the people that go for the UFO stuff, which I makes don't think the that fact they have that they, to be. I think that they yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. Been watching it, the same thing. It's funny because really, like the yep. best that you got going with the UFO stuff is there might actually be a deep state conspiracy here. <laughs> like, like, like this, they the government might be lying. But no, they want to be heroes. Q yeah, yeah. wants to be yeah, heroes. Yeah, you can't be a hero with the aliens and yeah, aliens would un unite unless, us unless they unless you get to be uh. Friend, what's and his I tend name to think and, if they, uh, independence if they care. day if the yeah. aliens care this will not be independence day right like if the aliens like what are you asking <laughs> no i don't think they care it's stepping on an ant like, if i know where your house is and i'm already in your house you lose like like you're, you're not coming to my house i'm already in your house you lose buddy um like if they really care they lose and so that's a big problem for QAnon. it's not like you can really coherently and coherently is a low bar for the QAnon people um, pitch to them. We're going to figure out a way to fight the aliens. Um, the aliens that all they need to do is throw a rock really fast at us and we're done. Yeah. They like, just hit us with the propulsion that they've got. But like if the vehicles are solid, they're coming at us at like 28,000 miles a second splat. Uh, this is a short battle. So the disinformation campaign of the past ufo stuff was pretty much to hide from our cool our super cool technology during the red scare sort of stuff and, and stealth, stealth what is it now yeah. what is it what are they what are they going okay because they're going the complete opposite direction and being like look it could be aliens this whole time what is that trying to yeah there was a shift right there was, there was a, a shift big, it's that's like the thing that's interesting there's it's, a shift there, yeah. like it was once it's like it's not real it's fine it's fine it's it's not real like back during like the cold war now it's like a little jingle the keys a little bit over here um over well here. okay what's interesting is that Limited. it was it was real or it was it was like that as late as 2013 2014 it's like the theodore roosevelt stuff and also like delong's project sort of like force the hand on this in a different way um like maybe they realize we don't give a fuck now like like uh, oh they they would actually they don't care okay i, I mean i i think like i i think a lot of this is i'm going through the tiktok i don't want to read like all of the not the tiktok website but like washington post <laughs> and like no no like the, you know cnn has like a good like sort of timeline on this washington post yeah. had a good profile on this um when you go through this i think like look it had to build up steam um i i yeah i and i think that it's just a number of things you sort of had to align for this push, but but it is really interesting to hear like the defense department and stuff change their posture from deny like we can neither confirm nor deny to yes we confirm that that is a real video. Um, either they decided it did not behoove them to try to fight this anymore, and that fighting it would only create more attention and more analysis. Um, on a thing that they didn't want more fighting and attention and analysis on. Um, so again, getting back to what are they hiding? Or they just decided that like, if you don't know what it is, just say you don't know and it's not us. That like, this is actually the fastest, cleanest course of action. Um, yeah, I, I, I hate to not... say that I generally take the government's, I think the government's stand on this is generally right. But like, I also did that with 9-11 too. Like, I, you know. I didn't watch the building seven videos and like deeply parse, you know, all the frames on those. Um, I, 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 
I just have a hard time believing that a conspiracy of this sort um, could be pulled off because our government's not very good at it. I agree with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. the conspiracy angle has never... Messy and too many people. But, I mean, it. Th there's like so many possibilities of the truth that all of them are so... Uh, they scramble the brain, frankly. Did you ever get, in terms of like disinformation campaigns, have you ever heard the conspiracy that um, Disney made Frozen just so that when you Google the phrase Disney's Frozen, they wouldn't see Disney's Frozen head anymore? So that was, that's a conspiracy. There's no, who knows if it's true or not, but the idea of like taking the Google algorithm and making it get rid of things that they don't want you to talk about anymore. Um, so is um, there an angle to that? Like if we, wait, if we wait, wait, throw all this stuff tulpa? out there. Is that a tulpa? Is that a tulpa? I mean, Disney's frozen wait. head is totally a tulpa. We made it exist. Yeah. It must no, exist. Well, yeah. Or make <laughs> no frozen the movie. Like, is, is it like oh, a God. mass manifestation? Like if no, we stop it's just a, in frozen, it will disappear. It's just a really disappointing film that I was told was good and it was not. And then everybody was singing a song for a long time and, here Lindsay, I am. it's the second result when I search Disney's Frozen, so I don't think they buried it that far. See, the consp conspiracy theorists, what do they know? Yeah. But it, I did hear that once. I was like, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I, I think we're we're really missing like a, a key inciting incident of the, the government changing its tune. And it was I think it was when uh, Mark Hoppus kicked Tom DeLonge out of Blink-182. He really set the universe in <laughs> complete imbalance and that just the the was that it that set off a like a real defcon alert at the u.s government like oh shit it's on well yeah it is yeah. weird that we have to talk about this right now i mean there's kind of a lot going on already <laughs> when yeah. it rains it pours yeah i i know right like i mean there is a lot going on um i don't it, it's certainly uh, I don't think anyone who listens to this show would argue that it has somehow distracted me from Joe Manchin over the last two months. Lord, like, it, it, I, I, I dream of a time where we will not have to say his name on the show anymore because I got done saying Donald Trump on a regular basis on every episode, and now we have to say Joe Manchin every show. So, like, if it's supposed to be distracting, like... I There's not enough it. information for it to truly be distracting. It's the, not it, getting pushed very Joe hard. Joe Manchin is a tulpa. I, I, I wish. <laughs> oh, God. I, I wish we could stop believing. Like the, the distracting thing would be the report comes out. When When is it actually supposed to come out fully? July. July. June, like, June it 25th. comes out June 25th. Great. Can't wait. Going to mark it on my calendar and then be disappointed. Um, That comes out and it is just a confession from government agencies yeah it's it's aliens or it's x nation you never would have thought that has had this technology for a while and we just finally caught up which is why we're okay you know not hiding it now blah blah, blah you know like venezuela that would be that would be the whole time that's where yeah the like went. The that Cubans. that to me is where i like, like wakanda down, is like, real yeah, is like it's a distraction thing because I, Marvel TV shows do a better job of actually distracting people than this thing ever did. This distracts the people that just annoy you. Like it, it's not, it's not big enough to sell me on the. They're just getting you to like not focus on this other thing, man. Like, it no, doesn't I, feel like they're setting the table for anything, man. Yeah, no, like, like that's yeah. the thing I keep trying to go to is I'm like, all right, if I'm being led, like, like to where and to what end? Um, because I tend to think, you know, what's going to be in this report ultimately? I think they're going to have a hundred plus incidences that they've looked at, and about seventy to eighty of them they've been able to explain by fairly conventional means, either weather balloons um bad uh instruments or whatever and then the remaining i don't know 20 30 40 of them 
um, are things that they legitimately do not have an explanation for after sort of trying to rule out all these other things. Um, it'll, it'll be interesting to know how deep the investigation is or like what the process, like it'd be interesting to see what they fully disclose or like what they disclosed during this. But like, um, I mean, if, if the government's ignorant about something, they can't tell us about something they don't understand. Yeah. Um, you know, like that's part of this too. I, I mean, there's this like suggestion that they're hiding something and hiding something implies that, you know, the thing that you're hiding. Yeah. Yeah. They might be hiding ignorance. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, Which is a valuable commodity to hide sometimes. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Sometimes you don't want, we don't want them to know that we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> It could be China, it could be Russia, it could be South Africa, it could be Australia, but we don't want them to know that we don't know that they, you know, like, but. I... Okay, so who is it? Here's the thing. If it's not aliens, literally, who is it? Collab. It's got to be the United States. I think it's the United States. I, like, if it's, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I simply do not believe, given the government's of Russia and China, like in Putin's mentality and like his impulsiveness that he could be sitting on generational leap technology when it comes to propulsion for 20 years. Meanwhile, to keep himself occupied, shoot down like MH370, poison the Skripals, maybe dibble and dabble over here in election wection over here, maybe support Marlene Le Pen and, and Brexit. And, and, and my Trump card that I got in my pocket here is that I've got like the super jet. Um, and I don't, I don't believe that China would do that either because like their building projects are really asinine. Um, so this Australia. is a humble brag. This is a massive humble brag. Australia. No, you're, you're, it's Elon Musk. I, I would, it's the one, the person I, the, the country I most believe it would be, would be the United States. I just like, I, I, I tend to think if it was the United States, the, like there would be a real effort to clamp down on a thing like unidentified even being made. Like, I, I don't actually think that if it is the United States, the thing like unidentified helps them cover up this. If anything, it makes it puts a spotlight on it. Um, Like it, it, these documentaries, like straight up, these documentaries didn't exist. This episode wouldn't exist. So, like, if, if you're creating this documentary to make this shit go away, it has the opposite effect. You would you would have a silence campaign out there. Alessandro is not that hard of a guy to silence. Whoa, Chris. What's what? your plan? It sounded very uh, threatening. Look, if, <laughs> all I'm saying is if Lou calls me again, he will find out what these hands can do. They I can. I also got trained. Tap gently against doors and ask politely to. How tall do you think he is? I bet I'm taller than him. I bet you he's. I'm like, giving him a five seven. He's like, he's like the size of Taz. I bet you he's five three. Yeah. Yeah. So no. 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 Yeah. Every ufologist is is five seven. Not quite short. Not quite tall. <laughs> got to i'm five eight and that's a mean and horrible thing that you have done and said i'm five four so i am you're short you're short <laughs> what i am a gray i am basically the size of a gray <laughs> i feel like they're smaller like i i, I mean I, I haven't spent too much well, time thinking okay. about gray you gotta, but I, I mean, on, there's different like, types of aliens don't be i racist. played perfect dark Back in 1998, I, I you know, I not don't want to date myself here, but uh, I have a cartridge of it. Um, you literally and, started this two-parter with saying you were turning 35. I don't want to date myself. I don't want to date myself by saying my age. Okay, okay, Chris, come on, think about it. There's the little grays. No. There's the, like the little tiny three foot kind of grays, and then there's the grays that but, um that we had at roswell those are more my height and then there's the tall whites which are the ones that are hanging out in the arctic and then there's the uh reptilians which are you know there's, there's interesting kind of low-key characters like are they good or are they bad we don't know it depends on who they're you know the deceiving are, at that time not good i think we like what we <laughs> did you, you gotta have them though you gotta have them they live under the, the ground reptilians are not good like if, the reptilians live under the ground they, was, appease them. they can yeah. come up at any time and sprout forth yeah i i, I don't i don't know why you know why would we even debate the reptilians like they're obviously evil don't hear, let them hear them say that. They're more powerful than all the rest of them.
they do control many world governments um totally not a crypto conspiracy for the jews uh a, a, nope. absolutely not <laughs> and those creepy tall whites what are they up to <laughs> being tall and white stop slandering my polish people <laughs> as um, a as a six and a half foot and like very as a very large individual uh, y- you short people should take solace in the fact that you're much cheaper to blast into space when we actually become like a commercially uh, spacefaring uh, race. Like my ticket is going to be so much more expensive than like yeah. literally a hundred pounds more expensive than somebody you're who's gonna like, need like, like a five seven hundred and forty pound guy. Oh, you're gonna man. have to buy two tickets so that you can at least slouch a little bit and not be touching the top of the cabin. Exactly. There, the the weight prejudice when it comes to launching the shuttles into space is going to be brutal uh, we're not going to space no no I, none I, of I, us I, are I, going like, to space no, we, we can end it here i here's the thing guys i think musk and bezos are also doomed on this too i think they're all on a fool's errand i i get that they think that they're going to escape climate change and global warming or whatever and die on mars i believe they'll die on the way uh (laughs) i i I have no doubt on that uh but yeah no i don't think they're gonna make it i don't none of the generations that are born today will actually be able to get off this rock in any meaningful way like it will be our kids kids that will like still be dealing with climate change and then maybe their kids will be able to get something done in terms of instead of going to disneyland they'll go to the moon for like and yeah, I don't moon, the moon. moon base and space platform. I don't, I'm not even like totally convinced that I may honestly, maybe they're, they're delusional enough and they have enough money that like, I feel like money just breeds delusion within people, but I don't think they actually think they're going to be able to get off. I think it's just a hope <laughs> like they are too old and the technology is just not there to race up to meet them by the time that like it would mean anything for them to get off you know like yeah elon Musk doesn't want us to they will be they will be in like their yeah they'll be yeah yeah that that and they they don't actually want to none of these people actually want being the first person or like a, a trying to build a city build a colony build a whatever any place when you're the first person to do it it's incredibly hard and shitty and like yeah it requires tremendous altruism and leadership that they (laughs) neither one of them have the first people that land and actually live on any of the like either mars or the moon are going to die there and they will probably die prematurely like this is not going to be a very pleasant thing for quite a while like (laughs) new There will New be places Roanoke. named after there will be places named after the people who who like first came there and there will be a lot of names to pick from probably. I don't the think river, any of them will yeah. The river oh. musk sounds horrible. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like the Oregon Trail. You have died of dysentery, but it's like you have died of space spores. Just we died of tiny little bacteria. Yeah, you, you're Ooh. the cross Mons Olymp- or Olympus Mons in on Mars. <laughs> but yeah, no. like so that's the whole game. No, I, I mean, I think if I had to go to like Mars or whatever, I would rather trust my hands in like the hands of a military commander or something. I think that's the best chance of maybe successfully settling on on a distant planet. But I would never trust Bezos or Musk because like all. M- Bezos, I guess, understands how to grow out of business, and maybe I trust him more than Musk. Musk has not actually demonstrated that he knows how to do anything. Um, he's correct. Just, he's I just, just need to guy. say that very clearly. Correct. He is just a guy with a Twitter, and he can. He's a lot say like stuff. Trump. He just likes being able to tweet and make stuff happen. Like. I would love Twitter to take away Musk's uh, Twitter account. That would be that'd be a good day. That'd be good fi- the, the only he good thing I've fi- ever seen Musk do is when he like showed off that car and he threw the rock at it and it shattered the window that he had just got done telling all those people it's not going to shatter even if you shoot it. Like that's the only only thing that he's ever done that's brought me joy. 
honestly you should just focus on the solar stuff and actually make it affordable and you know we might remember him as like a really great dude but i i don't know about that but like if he actually led a solar revolution uh that would be at least something he could claim. He be he could move into where Bill Gates was about ten years ago before uh, reality caught up to Bill Gates. The SEC also needs to approve any of his tweets before they're actually allowed to go through. Like it needs to go through like a delay where it gets approved by like some somebody at the Security Exchange Commission. <sighs> All right, I think we are. Uh, I think we're done here. Unless anyone else has anything more to talk about or feels like there's a topic we have not hit on yet well chris i think i feel like we completely like I, i'm not a skeptic but i feel like i my, my skeptic side and everybody else's else's skeptic side came out and just like beat you up but, so, <laughs> we caught him in a back can, alley <laughs> please please tell us let us dream what is your what is your actual opinion yeah, over yeah, what yeah. you saw and watched yeah okay so like i mean look um i think that harry reed daniel inouye ted stevens any number of people well beyond lou alessandro have sank like countless hours and hours of their life and time and energy of their life into something involving this unidentified aerial phenomenon I believe that men, especially like Inouye, Inouye was a fucking guy with stroke back in the day. He was not some sort of lightweight in the Senate. He was a guy in leadership in a serious way. Harry Reid, a majority leader. Ted Stevens, also a guy in Republican leadership. I know he's remembered notoriously for the internet, is made of tubes, but he had a much, much bigger and broader career and was like a real power broker in the Senate. There are like these really serious people who have devoted a ton of time and energy into this. And either they're all lying, and in which case there should be a real accounting as to what they've all been lying about since the late 1990s. Um, or what I think is far more plausible is that they're telling the truth about the unidentified aerial phenomenon. Um, and at this point, uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time with the skeptical arguments. I think they've got a decent case with Elizondro, but they, they fall really short on actually accounting for all of the man hours that like serious people with serious careers, with serious money, top 10% people who have nothing to gain from this and a lot to lose from this, especially if you're talking about this in the late 90s and the aughts. If you're saying, I think there's something else in the skies and it's not one of ours, like that's not helping you in any tangible way. And yet there are all these people and I'm not able to just say, that one, the eyewitnesses, the pilots, the guys in the military are all bonkers. And also beyond that, that the endeavors of all of these serious people who have been trusted with serious information on a wide range of topics and have been privy to intel that none of anyone on this call or any of the people that we have read in the last six weeks have had access to, that all of these people are acting in this way and quietly. It wasn't a mainstream story. There was still a push for the war on terror. And yet this quietly just sort of continued it continued into the obama administration it continued in the trump administration you have like trump dod guys saying this you got rubio saying this you got democrats saying this you got mccain involved in some of this stuff it's got this broad bipartisan support in a time when almost nothing else does and so it's either a deep conspiracy to deceive the american public and arguably the world um in which case it's actually been as we've discussed at length here kind of presented in like a very weird and like not satisfactory way if you're really going to try to get that one off the ground like i mean i think we've given that some serious consideration but there are a number of different ways why that just simply doesn't pass the test um of like what seems to be going on here um so then I go back to maybe there really is an unexplained aerial phenomenon. And when they say that it's not us and it's not Russia and it's not China, that they've looked at and they've tried to find conventional explanations for all of these. And for some of these, they just simply cannot. Um, I tend to go that like people are telling the truth that like it's not 
this big, grand, low-key deception because it goes back to a basic competency thing where you start at, Lindsay. So, like, to go to speak to your skepticism specifically, if you really believe that this has been a sustaining grand illusion by the government on the United States public and the world, I do not. It's 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 an <clears throat> unbelievably competent U.S. government. Um, like, yeah, that, or it's that, three people. It has to. You can only do that with like two or three people. And, and, and you would certainly go out of your way to try to stop Harry Reid of all people from being the revelatory force. What you would want would be someone like Michelle Bachman or Matt Gates uh, to put it into a more modern vintage here, or Dennis Kucinich, um, another one. You would. I think you're accurate on everything that you've said. That's what I'm. What the problem is? Yeah. Is that it, it's exactly what it is. It's unidentified aerial phenomenon or unexplained, whatever the U stands for these days. And that's I, I would still, even go on the the day. that they've tried to account for it with any number of different things. And, and I, it, I it, believe everybody, I believe it. I believe the eyewitnesses saw what they saw. I and, and I also, Harry believe Reed believes what he believes. And I believe that the internal analysts who have taken a look at this, the professional internal analysts inside of our own government who have had access to much better and a more complete picture of the data yeah. um, and all of that. I, I think that if they could have ruled this out, they would have ruled this out. I think that if they could have accounted for this, they would have accounted for this. Or this campaign, such as it has been, one that has been growing in steam, but over a very long and sustaining period of time with no clear end and not really kind of serving any distraction thing, I think it would have petered out. Like, I... I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, you know, with regards to who the aliens are, what are they doing? I, I have no idea. I think that's the problem. I, I, and I spend no time. I honestly, in thinking my way to here, spent no time on that side because I think, frankly, it's a bit of a distraction. You have to look at like the actual two decades long process here and go either all these men are fucking stupid. They're all liars, men and women, I suppose, are all stupid. They're all liars. These pilots didn't really see what they saw when they went and reported to the government. The government people were also stupid because they heard this unreliable eyewitness testimony, didn't even bother to check it, and then made a series of career decisions for years to get to this point. Um, it just beggars belief. Um, and it's a great claim. It's a fantastic claim, but it would need a lot more evidence for me to like actually be able to kind of go there. I just think that the simplest explanation here to, I guess, invoke another cliche around fact finding or whatever. I think the simplest explanation was the most plausible, which is that the government, when, when people like Rubio and this report and stuff say that like, it's not us and we've looked at other things and we don't know what it is. Um, and we've been able to rule out some of these other things is Russia, China, whatever, that they're telling the truth. Um, and, and I just have not seen, I've seen, you know, a, a breakdown about this video or that video. I've seen questions about Elizondro and all of that's well and good. Um, but it doesn't actually do a good job accounting for the broader story here. I think what we have here is a problem that I can accept the sincerity. I think, I think maybe even most people on this call can accept the sincerity of the evidence and the people. The problem is, uh-oh, what does that mean? And that's where we're going to really never I, have like a really clear answer. I think answer, that's what in... lawmakers are wrestling with. Like, I, 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 and I think like the, when you like read the Rubio quotes, I think Rubio, dude who likes to post God quotes on Twitter at the most inopportune times, um, sometimes at like hilariously hypocritical times. I think a guy like Rubio, let's assume that he really believes in God and really believes in Jesus and all that stuff. I think that like when he looks at this evidence and when he says the things he says, part of him hurts even kind of considering that like there is another being in the universe, um, another species perhaps in the universe and if if that's so, they're definitely kicking our ass right now because they know where we live and we have no idea where they live. And I guess that's a question for the, everybody else is like, do we doubt the sincerity of anything that we saw? I believe, I think the only person who is somewhat questionable is uh, Alessandro on occasion. But I when I see the inter the interviews 
feel real to me. I don't see tells or things like that with um, the, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, the pilots and stuff. They they don't have like, like tells like in the voices of and braver and all. Those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I don't think the ev if the evidence is right there and if that's a real video and we accept that that's a real video, then you know that's another thing I believe is sincere. So that's the problem. Is I don't know. I I believe it's sincere. I don't know what it is. Anybody else want to actually take a stand on I, if they believe what they see or not? I I think. I think all of these eyewitnesses believe like they, I don't think anybody like they're any of the eyewitnesses are trying to pass any kind of grand conspiracy. I think they believe they saw what they believe. I just think without any actual data, uh, that's not just an anecdotally testified to radar data. Like it's very hard to verify any of those, any of those claims. So, well, so I guess it's, there's, there's I'm a, just no, trying to where that like ends, where does that shake out position wise? I mean, in, in the same spot of, we don't know what they are. And like, I just, I'm, I am uh, so, on, like, the, on the skeptical lawmakers, side of the hump from them. Senate and lawmakers, are they deceiving the public? Is America sitting? No, they believe the evidence the same way that you do. What, what we're getting at <laughs> is that there's common ground here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I mean, again, I think those lawmakers have a lot more evidence than me. So even to say that they believe the same way I Absolutely, do. Absolutely. No, no, have... Dan, they don't. I'm saying they're operating with a lot more evidence than I have. So they don't believe it the same way I do. Um, they might believe it with a much greater intensity than I do because they've seen more information. But there's actually a really distinct difference here. Um, yeah, I, 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 and it's their level of informational access um, and, and these ex-military members' level of informational access, including at the time, um, that actually makes them privy to a lot more. So their belief, whatever their belief is, is uh, much better informed than mine is. Does anybody believe that the eyewitness testimony, the lawmakers, and the videos are bullshit? One of those people are bullshit. One of those videos is doctored. Does anybody believe that? I don't. I don't think necessarily videos are doctored. I think they're misinterpreted. I think I don't think there's a there's a at least the the Nimitz and the uh, like. I I don't think that there's a big information like a disinfo. Like yeah, uh, can this evidence be admitted in court, or do we believe it was tampered with? Uh, no, I'm done with court. No, we, we're done uh, with yeah. court. No, no more court. No more court. Are on, no more court. Me and, hey, no more Chris, court. Me and Daniel we decided that that was a bad argument. No, but me and Daniel are on court. So if we both agree that you can have the same evidence and come to different conclusions, you know, this is this is DNA evidence. This is the murder trial. The defense says he is innocent because this, and the prosecution says he is guilty because this. But we both agree that the evidence itself is correct that that is blood evidence from the crime scene yeah yes dun 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 <laughs> but it's the, the it's it's evidence of what like blood blood evidence we don't know we, don't, we can't but like point we don't know specific thing yeah but that's that's what i'm saying like it's this these videos don't actually show us anything so we can't assume we're that just they in the are, discovery that they're phase. even moving in the discovery phase of court Right now, we're not at the trial. We're not. We're not at uh, at opening opening closing arguments. We're just in the. Can we admit this into the 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 court that this is evidence that is of something? Absolutely. And then both both sides of the prosecution will bring in uh, experts at interpreting <gasps> that evidence to yes. to parse through it. Yes. <gasps> and they might bring in eyewitnesses <gasps> as well. If, if they're able to corroborate any of that evidence with like uh, ev any of that testimony with like hard evidence or additional or, corroboration. Or additional, uh, yeah, additional eyewitness. My point, is, my point is simply, holy shit, that's a really crazy place to be at. Yeah, no, I, we're, we're really up in the air. <laughs> <laughs>
I like, look, I just think, you know, my sympathy to the UFO skeptics, Bigfoot skeptics have a much easier <laughs> day at the gym. Uh, it, it's real easy. Bigfoot. I, I got bored. Um, uh, not, not bored. But I had some time on my hands. So I decided to take a look at like Bigfoot and like, see like, what were like the best, uh, most well-documented Bigfoot incidences. And, uh, here's what I got for you. Um, an incident in 1924 often referred to as the battle of ape Canyon tells of miners being attacked by large hairy ape men that hurled rocks onto the cabin roofs from a nearby cliff of one of the miners who was allegedly, who allegedly shot one with a rifle. Um, that group of miners is actually probably one of the largest groups of people that ever collectively claimed to have seen a Bigfoot, um, let alone fight one. Uh, brave men, brave men. Uh, Canadian prospector Albert Ostman uh, reported that he was abducted by a Bigfoot and held captive with its families for six days. Um, he reported that they did not cause him harm but instead were amused by his presence. Uh, that man, I went and looked onto it. Osman went on to have a, a lucrative career. Like he's like a Richard Doty type going around telling people about uh, his time with the Yeti. Uh, in Folk, Arkansas in 1971, a family reported that a large hair covered startled or hair covered creature startled the woman reaching through a window. Um, the alleged incident caused panic in the area, but again, it's literally like one person saying, Hey, we saw a Bigfoot. Um, these are some of the best known, most well, well verified Bigfoot, uh, sightings here. Um, according to the big, the BFRO, uh, which is a, a big, yeah, yeah. It, uh, an authority when it comes to Bigfooting, um, if you will, um, there have been no, Credible modern reports of any humans being killed by a Bigfoot, but harassment and stalking like behaviors towards people have been reported. Um, there's a great documentary called Sasquatch, uh, which talks about marijuana. Far yeah, no, it's a wonderful documentary. Uh, there's also a fun fictional movie called 15 Top 15 Facts About Bigfoot. Number one might surprise you. That's very funny. Uh, worth your time here. I have uh, a I have another Bigfoot documentary for you. What you got for me? Um, it's about this guy you might have heard of him called Sam Elliott. Um, he killed Hitler and then he shot Bigfoot. So you should go watch that later. It's a, actually a, like a true story documentary. Nice, nice. Yeah, no, but um, like basically, like but nothing like the fighter pilots and credible people who saying I saw this. I don't know what it is. You just <laughs> simp. No, like you, I, I. I, that's the thing that I kind of went back to um, is I'm like, like, all right, let's like really kick the tires on this and comp these two. And like, it just, they simply don't analogize. Um, like it's very like to swat away. Bigfoot is pretty much effortless. And if you want to do it with Nessie or whatever, same thing. Um, and we've only talked about in the course of this episode, our, our own government. We didn't talk about like the Italians who are looking at this and like the governments in South America who are also looking at this again, but who, tr who trusts the Italians? I, I don't know. I wouldn't. Uh, never. Uh, I wouldn't even attend. I wouldn't trust their descendants, to be completely honest. Uh, they're shady people, not reputable. Um, but uh, yeah, same thing with the Chileans, honestly. Novembrino. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing with the, you know, I, I'm not even Chilean, but, uh, you know, it, the fact that they're in league with the Italians is enough for me. Um, same thing with the Argentines. They let too many Italians in. Um, all right. Any other uh, thoughts here, closing thoughts, or any other topics we wanted to hit here? Uh, I mean, did anybody did anybody see the mansion? Uh, um, hear the the mansion phone call. Oh my the God, the mansion phone call. Uh, you, Lindsay, have you heard about this yet? Okay, so uh, this is, I, I guess, bonus round here for everyone. So Joe Mansion today did a call with really like friend of the show and one of my favorite packs of all time. No labels. I sometimes labels get in the way. No labels. Oh my what yeah yeah no labels. i have not heard oh <laughs> i just bad, had like baby. the i had like the friggin like obi-wan and like a new hope that's a name i have not heard it sometime like <laughs> what so they have uh they, you've got like a bundler on there for no labels and a number of other people on this like centrist business chamber of commerce sort of bipartisan let's work together and be problem solvers sort of thing um, and they have Manchin on the line and Manchin says a number of different things on this phone call. One of which he says is, I really need Roy Blunt 
and, and three other senators to come over and join me on creating this 9-11 commission. Because otherwise, the left is going to keep saying, how's that filibuster working out for you? How's that bipartisanship working out for you? So, like, Manchin is currently actively trying to get the 1-6 commission made, and, and he'll probably neuter it on the back end. But he's trying to get it made right now specifically so that he can say, see, bipartisanship works. I was able to, through my Joe Manchiny mansionings and my mansionations, if you will. You like that? Yeah. 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 Uh, my, through my mansionations, I have been able to get bipartisanship to work in Washington. This will up Joe, Joe Manchin's leverage. Um, but no labels in all of them promised a lot of money and sort of like opened up this call by saying like we're getting ready to support anyone who really needs our support who really does the things to get bipartisanship to start happening in washington again we're just waiting to see how this vote goes and that's when they bring up yeah yeah they they bring up blunt specifically and say that like we want to make sure uh mansion brings up blunt and he says blunt's leaving um and you know maybe he could get a great position Maybe you guys could talk to him about having a really nice like lobbying position when he leaves. Never mind the fact that Manchin's chatting with uh, Republican Roy Blunt and leadership, making you wonder how often does Joe Manchin chat with Republican leadership and what else do they talk about when they have those conversations on a regular basis? Uh, part part of his part of his uh, the the methodology for bringing bringing these these rational Republicans back over to our side to form this one one six commission is for these donors to support these Republican candidates, which is just, you know, really what you want from a, from a democratic Senator. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I, I know there's still some debate on is Joe Manchin like secretly a Republican, but I, the case for inside job saboteur keeps getting stronger and stronger or at bare minimum there are more and more discreet events that are happening that you can certainly read them with the, uh, it, this is a throwback. Is he the mole sort of uh, yeah, situation? You get Anderson Cooper on the job here. Let's find out what's going on. It's going to be really cool to hear the arguments he makes to get rid of the filibuster for the Republicans in five years. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know what? I you know, I just got to support this motion. We have to put another Supreme Court justice on it and expand the court out to 11. Him and him and Tulsi on the other side over there. Uh, making making Lindsay's it. eye explode by proposing adding two more, expanding the court out to add on two more conservative justices. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, was there anything else on the call that I missed, Dan, or did I do a pretty good job summarizing the substance of the call? Uh, I think I think you got it. The oh, I was trying to think what else. What else were the really big? Uh, the the t- lobbying for a, the job of an already sitting like lobbying for a job for an already sitting senator. The donate to Republicans. I was trying to. There was an, there was some. There's some really there's some really great stuff in there. The intercept has the, has the full call. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's where I was listening to it. And I, I mean, no, Mitch Man- is just really transparent. Like he is trying to fight the left. He views the left as his enemy. Um, and I think the one good thing that's coming out of this is I think like, you know, that's getting play in the intercept and that like we're talking about it is the left is now starting to rightly realize this guy, yes, he might be running cover for other Democrats, but this guy's got to get smoked out first before we can see where the other turncoats are. Um, like this guy is their first line of defense, and he's got to be defeated. Was this a phone call that was supposed to be leaked? Like it was supposed to be released, or was it like leaked and now it's really hurting his image? Because that could be great leverage for him to do something if he's been uh, Roy, you know. Blunt, Roy Blunt definitely did not want this phone call out there because like Roy, Roy Blunt, although he's not facing because nothing's illegal in Washington anymore, he is potentially facing an ethics investigation on this. And as we know, ethics investigations could be very shame inducing. Manchin, Manchin was very careful during the call to not directly uh, solicit 
solicit donations himself like there was bundlers who were talking about like how to strategize the money and like hey you should really go talk to these people and at office on the the call he was very careful not to not to run afoul of well hopefully not that careful but he he tr was trying to be very careful not to run a run afoul of uh uh campaign finance laws but at what point do places like MSNBC and the Sunday morning talk shows start asking people like him hard questions? Does that ever happen? I think that might be coming up. It, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I Sunday. <laughs> no, I, I, I think like, for example, um, there's going to be a rift inside of the leadership among like the black caucus, essentially for just to kind of get right to it um, over the voting rights act stuff. That like this Juneteenth passage of like the, establishing that as a federal holiday, um, I saw Kamel Bell sort of summarize it nicely. It's like getting nice lights in like a cool stereo in your car. That's neat, but what I need is a car. Um, like the you know in the voting rights bill um, and, and HR one is the thing, and if Mansion's standing in the way of that and. Now, here's the other thing. The call makes it really hard because he it's it has smoked him out as a guy trying to maximize his leverage and get more power. No, not that way, Dan. Uh, it, it would never do it like that. Um, it would never they would never smoke him out like that. But uh, it, but it, it really may help, Chris. It really no, might help. <laughs> I, I hear I hear he prefers opioids, uh, but that's just that's just what my people are telling me. Um, like, yeah, it, it, more of a pill guy. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think. I, I just, I don't know. I, I have a hard time. I, I have a hard time seeing this continuing for too much longer because I don't think that the Stacey Abramses of the world are going to just sit back and abide this. I think that, you know, and, and even a guy like Clyburn, who did a lot to maximize his leverage to support Biden, I think that's a real question. How does Clyburn feel about Joe Manchin's antics? And if Clyburn turns against Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin might have a real problem on his hands. But if Clyburn's fine with Joe Manchin, then Joe Manchin's probably okay. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the Democrats in the midst of trying to prove that Trump was a corrupt piece of crap looked at Governor Cuomo and went, yeah, this is fine. We'll stand with this guy. It's really tough when the internal numbers in the state for Cuomo are not negative. Like, I, I mean, I'm with you. Like, look, I want the party to go like this guy's unacceptable and walk away from him. It's really weird when our own electorate won't, though. You know, yeah, it's it's very true. It's tough. And but New York's New York's also one of those states that can vacillate into it's like California, where. up the possibility for someone like Chris Christie, like a, a very, a, a moderate Republican, a smooth, like uh, kind of like a, a Republican with some spunk and swagger to actually like come in and take it away from them. Let's, Which, let's just reflect on Chris Christie as a moderate Republican for a moment. I, I think, mean, wasn't he okay on gay marriage? Like, like which at the yeah, time was a pretty big deal. I, I was a New Jersey resident throughout uh, the majority of Chris Christie's uh, term. And though he like he he sucked and he, he was uh, I mean, he was a he was a bully. He was he was cr like kind of corrupt. He wasn't like a, he wasn't like a religious zealot. He, he was a money. He was a money guy. He was a, a chamber of commerce guy like uh, and he made made money. Put it. I mean, he uh, made his career putting Jared Kushner's dad in jail. Like, I mean. Like going, go. I wouldn't have necessarily mind him if minded Chris Christie so much if he had kept going after uh, real estate corruption for his entire career. He just got like shitty and jingoistic. With Chess, you guys want an interview with Chesterfield Cat? Very vocal. He's Chester, I want to know what, on I know what his opinions are about Chester, disclosure. I need, yeah, all right. So, Chester, what do you think about Lou Elizondro? Chesterfield, you will not get fed if you don't give hot takes. Dodging the question. 
classic. This is the shit that I go through, ladies take. and gentlemen. I'm trying to bring you the hard hitting journalism. Chesterfield cat dodging me, like all the powers that be. Obama, Trump, Bush before him. None of them. Obama follows me on Twitter. Does he really? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't oh. he follow everyone? <laughs> no. 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 There was a time early in Twitter days when Obama like went on a following spree or Obama and he follows like a lot of normal people and I'm one of them. Ha ha. I could DM wow. Obama. <laughs> I can That definitely beats Cody's Rudy. Let me go over. Yeah, I, I could I could DM Cody. So what? <laughs> Rish, I, if Obama Rudy. followed me, I'd have to soft block it. Hey. You know what? Shit, I forgot to ask him. Hey, do you want to come on the show and talk about aliens? Uh, I'm sorry. You were supposed Sending to it. book Andrew Yang on this show, and that would have been a fun interview to have in the can for any number of reasons <laughs> since He's... then. Chesterfield's back. I Chesterfield still want his cat. opinion. Chesterfield cat. <laughs> Chesterfield. Look at him. Look at him. Just dodging. This is ridiculous. Chesterfield Cat. <laughs> Man. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's a deep thought. Yeah. No, he's deep. he's got things to say, doesn't he? Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Uh, it's amazing. Like whenever I put the mic in his face, he's like, I'm not interested in it, but the second I pull away, and you know, now he wants to talk again. Um, all right. I, I think we've uh, we've reached a good stopping point conclusion zone, a landing. Chester. Yeah, we're done. Um, all right, let's go around the horn. That's going to do it for this episode of Don't Worry About the Government. I want to thank Cody, Daniel, Lindsay, and Robert for coming on. Let's go around the horn here and get plugs. Lindsay, where can people find you on the interwebs? Did you did you think Cody? <laughs> no, I, I must. I was talking about Chesterfield. I must have uh, misspoke. I wanted to thank Chesterfield Cat for coming on the show today and really bringing that interview at the end of the show home. He's got a lot of takes, mostly on water, which he wants me to give him, and I won't ever give him again. Wow. Okay. I have no uh, plugs. It what? It's not even your turn. It was Lindsay's turn. I'm just preempting it. Uh, my plug is that you can find me at Twitter at Lindsay underscore zero zero seven, where I am currently complaining about ERCOT and uh, how hot it is in Texas and uh, that I'm watching some shows like Castlevania and Kim's Convenience and whatever I can find on YouTube. So, you know, hot takes. Aliens are real. Robert, how about yourself? Comcast tried to install internet, but I surrounded my house with bears and they defeated them. So you still have to go to DWATG. Nicely done. Good on those bears. And Dan. On on the Twitters at DL Carpenter. Uh, as for this show, you can support it at patreon.com slash DWATG. That's where you can watch the show and really the hard hitting interview with Chesterfield Cat that brought home the last seven minutes of this show and just really lit the world on fire to close it out. It's a shame that it didn't make it on to the final edit of the show. Uh, but if you want to see it, you can by going to patreon.com slash DWATG. Um, I'm on Twitter at DWATG. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're on Spotify. Uh, and that, that's really, that's really all the plugs. I guess I'll plug since you mentioned other things that you liked. I watched Wolf Walkers the other day and i thought that that was a delightful little animated film so if you're looking for like an animated film that's uh good and not disney or pixar or whatever that crap is uh, go watch wolf walkers see that's nice it warms the cockles and sub cockles of the heart i oh, have a plug oh, oh you said you had no plug. i have a, i listen this is a good one this is a nice one you're gonna take for it afterward okay if you care about chris if you like Chris as a person, as a host of this show, and potentially as a friend, do me a favor. Go to at Shake Them Ropes on Twitter and tell them to let Chris stop covering bad wrestling until it gets good again. I dragged him into this world, and I am trying to drag him back out of it with me because I left before he did. He does a show, so he is stuck there. I am trying to drag him through the shit. 
and he just won't come with me. Go to at Shake Their Ropes on Twitter and tell them, Chris, stop watching bad wrestling. Hashtag stop them ropes. We're, yes. we're really close to episode 500 over there. Um, I think I'm just trying to make it to that that marker. Um, and then uh, it might be time to stop watching modern wrestling and move into a wrestling retro show or something. But uh, yeah, uh, that was great. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming on. And until the next one, bye-bye.